it's that time of year again. August 2023 was my three year sewing anniversary. So like every year, I'll be showing you everything. Okay, well, most of the things that I made in my third year sewing. Like usual, all of my creations are 100% hand stitched and I'll be mentioning the estimated hours for each project. And I do this because I think it is so important to serve as a reminder that firstly, no skill is built overnight and oftentimes consists of putting in many hours of practice and also to show just how much time and effort can go into making a single piece of clothing and in turn how much time it may have taken for a dressmaker historically who often didn't get credit for their hard work. So for me, it's paying homage to all the dressmakers of the past and the present. I went through a lot of truly difficult things in my life this year. Things that were so challenging that I don't even fully know how I got through them. So I didn't sew as much as the two previous years, but I'm actually grateful for the slower pace. Despite everything happening in life, I treated sewing as a moment to enjoy working with my hands and getting present and in my body. And I made some deeply meaningful garments this past year. First off, I sewed a Lord of the Rings Elven meets Victorian dress, cloak, and belt. And then I also made this wire circlet to finish off the look. For the dress, I used a Victorian wrapper pattern and constructed it from this flowy embroidered pink cotton from my stash. And the dress is based on this beautiful outfit in a pre-Raphaelite painting called Apple Blossoms, as I've always felt that pre-Raphaelites are sort of the Victorian equivalents of elves. For the belt, I made it from a silk satin in my stash, and I cut it out in the shape of a leaf to add in a nature element. Then I embroidered some veins to make the leaves feel a bit more realistic and distinguishable. I made the cloak from the same silk material, and this time I embroidered an Art Nouveau nature-inspired design that I drew myself, and then transferred it onto the fabric. Finally, it was the wire circlet, which was something I've never made before, so it was one big experiment. And all this entire ensemble took me around 130 hours to make. This 1895 winter coat was an immense labor of love, and it took around 150 hours to make. A big chunk of that time I spent on adding the beading and the sutosh braid. It was also my first time properly tailoring something and my first time making a coat. So I was pretty overwhelmed when I started the garment, but I'm really happy with the result. I made it from a mauve purple coating wool and lined it with some silk. All the fabric as well was from my stash, and now I feel far more confident in sewing very fitted historical outerwear. Sometimes it takes committing to just one sewing project that is way out of your comfort zone to gain the confidence to tackle complex dream projects in the future. This 19th century working class bed gown was a bit of an experiment and is actually more of a wearable mock-up. A big thanks to my friend Liz Grills for helping me to create a pattern for this one. These bedgowns were worn in the 18th and 19th centuries throughout Britain and America. They're wonderful because they're loose fit and adjustable, and you can make them feel a bit more tailored by wearing a tied skirt and apron at the waist. This bedgown took me probably about 30 hours to sew. For this Charisse pink wrapper, I used the same pattern as I did for the Lord of the Rings Victorian dress, and for these other wrappers that I made in my second year sewing, I absolutely love this dress and it's made from such a beautiful drapey wool. I especially adore the cartridge pleating that I added to the back of the garment. It's such a comfortable dress to wear and is really going to add a bright pop of color to my life this autumn. Not to mention it's completely adjustable as the waist emphasis is created by a belt, meaning it'll fit for many years to come. In all, this wrapper took me about 50 hours to make. And then it's the Irish working class ensemble which consists of an apron, a skirt, and a bodice. This was part two of the series where I make the historical fashion of my ancestors, in this case, my Irish Scottish paternal grandfather. If you'd like to see my whole process of constructing this ensemble, I've linked the video in the cards above. In all, this ensemble took me about 100 hours to make. Around this point, I got really deep into researching my ancestral Volga Tatar fashion. I have a couple of hard to access books on the topic and I've slowly been filling my brain with everything I can find out about Volga Tatar fashion as I'm very proud to be a Volga Tatar. I decided to make this simple linen test dress and I say test because it really isn't where I want it to be, but it was just to get a feel for some of the construction and shapes of the period. In this case, the earlier to mid 19th century. I also made this beautiful piece of decorative ornamentation worn by many Volga Tatar women during the 19th century, and it's called an izu. Sometimes it's also referred to as a ruffle. 
I still want to add a stronger backing material, like perhaps some type of canvas, but I really enjoyed decorating this Izu. And it's worn like this at the front of the dress and tied at the neck. And I also place a couple of pins in the decoration to hold it in place. I have no idea how long this project took me because I spent immense amounts on all of the research and I'm still researching Volga Tatar fashion every day pretty much, but I'd estimate that the Izu took maybe 15 hours to make and the dress perhaps 30 hours. And then summer really crept up on me and suddenly it began getting very hot and very humid and I just wanted something flowy and pre-Raphaelite-esque and historical to wear on days where I felt like wearing less structured clothing. So I got this idea to use this free 1485 Italian shift pattern that I found on Pinterest and modify it into a dress. I chose this stunning green linen cotton fabric from my stash for the project. And I am pleased to report that I actually have not bought any new fabric in over six months. So a lot of what I made this year is what I already had at home. Such a satisfying feeling. And also it's incredibly hard to not shop for fabric for six months. So I'm feeling very proud of myself. For the dress modifications, I made it longer and added a very frilly ruffle to the bottom, which is about six meters of fabric that I condensed down to the size of the hem. I also created this system of bias tape channels on the wrong side of the sleeves that when gathered with drawstrings at the different contact points would produce these beautiful and renaissance inspired texture sleeves. The entire neckline of the dress is also set with a drawstring and bias tape channel, so the size is extremely adjustable. In all, this 1400s inspired dress took me about 50 hours to make. If you want to make your own, I've placed a link to the free pattern that I used in the description box. Then after this, I wanted to make a quick summer weight wool skirt that I could wear on hotter days. And yes, wool is very good for summer if it's lightweight enough. An acquaintance kindly gifted me some fabric, and so I decided to make this batch into a simple 18th century wrap skirt. The process was easy, and I simply pleated down two rectangles of fabric. I even used the selvedge for the hem, so I wouldn't need to spend time hemming the skirt. In all, it took me around 10 hours to hand sew. This is my favorite creation of all time, I think, because of how much it means to me. I've recently gotten the courage to actually start constructing the historical fashion of my ancestors, the Volga Tatars, instead of just researching it or testing out garment shapes like I explained earlier. The research aspect is super important, of course, but I realized I would at some point need to face my fears of actually constructing the garments. I had to make this pattern completely from scratch, as there is a serious lack of not only research on Volga Tatar fashion, but I'm pretty sure there are no patterns anywhere. So I basically made a flat pattern I can use again in the future by draping shapes onto my dress form. I used a few photos of working class Volga Tatar women during the late 19th and early 20th centuries as my references, which is how I ended up with this beautiful style of garment which would have typically been worn during that time period. When I started sewing a few years ago, I could have never imagined that I would be able to drape my own patterns, but here we are, and this is definitely something that I want to explore more of in my fourth year sewing. This garment took me around 60 hours to make. Also, I am absolutely going to make like five or more of these in the future. Well, that's it. That's what I made during my third year sewing. This year felt unique because I think I'm really stepping into the craft of sewing and feeling far more free in my ability to construct the garments that I want to, and even a lot of the time without the help of a pattern or even instructions. I have way more faith in my abilities as a dressmaker and courage to tackle even more complex projects in the future. In all, this year I sewed for around 625 hours. I really hope I did the math right. <laughs> And if you watched my last video, you'll know that I have started expanding my historical fashion interests beyond the 18th and 19th centuries. Be sure to click on this video here if you haven't heard the news yet. So for my fourth year of sewing, I look forward to making garments from periods that I haven't really explored. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. Isn't it wild to think that my channel is over two and a half years old now? I still can't believe it. I'll see you all in two weeks for another video.